and next we will hear from Jason Powell with ProWrestling.net. Hey, Jason. Hey, good morning. Can uh, you tell us about the Worlds Collide event that's on the calendar for the Royal Rumble weekend and, and what that means for TakeOver specials? Yeah, so as I was just saying, you know, the, the TakeOvers will continue. Um, there's some schedule shifting going on, and I think you'll see that. That is in a, a, in a, an opportunity to better serve our network subscribers to give them uh, more and more uh, live content, which obviously live is, is attractive and is, is a key. So to give them more and more of that on a more regular and more frequent basis. So uh, NXT takeovers, as you've seen over the last few years, will continue. But like, a, like the question before this was, you know, uh, will you see like 25, the individual Bridgeport shows? Yes. You know, um, some of them will be connected like WrestleMania weekend or whatever, um, and some will not be. And then where there are not, there are opportunities to do other content. So, you know, having an opportunity to do a Worlds Collide event where you have under the same banner, but you have separate branding. Um, and, 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 and at certain points in time in the future, possibly that those aren't under the same banner, but you have the opportunity to take sort of different brands and have them compete against each other and kind of get these one-off um, events that are spectacular, that for our, um, our more, uh, you know, passionate fans, that, that, that these are very, very meaningful events. And, and we, you know, we, we did some of them last year at Access, and we did some Worlds Collide event, uh, events there where, you know, you saw the UK talent against the NXT talent or Cruiserweights versus, uh, from 205 versus UK or NXT or even some Raw and SmackDown versus NXT and, and different things. Um, that's, that's really where those events are headed, and I think you'll see that they're very uh, fun, exciting, spectacular events that, that don't necessarily um, impact the brands themselves from their own individual storylines and where they're going. It's an opportunity to, to cross-combine and make some interesting content without having to take away from what they're doing individually. Okay, and also with the weekly NXT series being two hours in length, do you feel the need to expand the length of the takeover specials to accommodate more talent, or are you pretty happy with the basically the five-match setup that you have now? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll look at that as it moves forward, but like, it's, it's not about length of time or amount of content that you're putting out there. Like, clear, clearly, I want it to be enough. But I also don't want it to be too much where you start to get into a, a place where, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm the guy that when, uh, if I'm looking at my watch at the end of a movie going, how much longer is this thing? I uh -huh. feel like it was, you know, they, maybe they might have cut a scene or two out and I would have been happier. Uh, so I, I don't want to get into that space. For me, the, the takeovers are more the build to epic stories, right? It is the build of the shows and the shows have to be spectacular and of themselves but if you're reading a book and there are chapters that are really good but they're building to the big spectacular blow off chapters and those are the big epic moments that's what the takeovers are so it's really trying to build to these epic storylines and give you those big moments and keep the, the weekly shows as entertaining as possible and as meaningful as possible while always building towards the, you know, the kind of the crescendo event, so to speak. And, and if, if we can maintain that, then I, I think it's all about, um, if, if something, you know, uh, again, to go back to a movie reference, I've seen movies that are an hour and a half that I thought were mind-blowingly good, and I've seen movies that were three hours that I thought were mind-blowingly good. I've also seen both that were terrible. So it's about the content and the build, and if you build it right, um, it's not about the, the length of time. Hopefully you're not even considering it when the show's over. You're just going, man, that was good, you know? All right, thank you. Thank you. And next we will hear from Neil Docking with Daily Mirror. Hey, Please Neil. Go ahead. Hey, how are you? Good to speak to you. Team. There's, um, there's been talk of a new um, NXT UK uh, mid-card title uh, being in the works. 
Um, is that something that you see uh, in the near future and part of the expansion of the uh, NXT UK brand? Yeah, I, you know, one, I, 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 I don't like the term mid-card title. I just feel like it's like just, why don't you just call it the title and if you're not good enough to get to the other one, you take that one. Like, it just sounds terrible. Um, but uh, that's, it's a, these brands are constantly growing and they're constantly being evaluated for what's needed. Um, I don't see the need for that at this time. I know that's been speculated a lot about, but I think, I don't know, somebody put it on the idea on the internet, I think, and then everybody just ran with it. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily see it at this time, but I'm also not opposed to it, you know, and, and maybe very shortly down the line, that is an opportunity. Um, I, I think it just depends on, on how it moves forward and where the brand goes. And, you know, you want to make sure that you have enough talent. You want to make sure that they have... Um, opportunities that everything means something and that you know you don't just have a, a championship for the sake of having a championship but it really doesn't mean anything you know if, if, if it gets confusing and there are just too many um, then that doesn't do any any good either so uh, it's it's a constant evaluation process but but right now while we thought about it it's, it's not necessarily in the works okay um, Sam. I mean one other thing I was asking about was Killian Dane and um, Obviously, we saw him move up to the, the main roster of Sanity, um, and then he's returned to NXT now, and as you alluded to earlier, he's going to be part of this match with uh, Matt Riddle. Um, how do you assess um, Dane's um, potential and his, uh, his sort of current uh, state in the NXT landscape, you know, having returned to full sale? I think just like I did when he was there the first time in NXT, I think he's a phenomenal talent. Um, that is a, a sponge for growth and wants to get better all the time, and that's really what I'm looking for. Um, you know, th there's always going to be ebbs and flows. There's always going to be things that work and things that don't. Um, the beautiful thing about what we're creating, in my opinion, is that we are creating opportunity where, you know what, you're doing something here, and then you get an opportunity to do something else. And if it works, phenomenal. If it doesn't work, okay, there's other opportunities here. There's opportunities, and, and there will be opportunities all over the globe. So it, it's not about um, just where you are at the moment and, but boy, take this risk, but if it doesn't work out, thanks for coming. Um, you know, there, there's opportunities to continue to grow, to continue to grow, grow creatively and, and expand and do more, and I think that over time, you're going to see that, you know, even just now, the opportunities for talent to um, excel, let's say, in NXT, and then move over to the UK for a little while and freshen up and do something different there with a whole different roster of talent. Maybe, you know, try on something new, expand their character, grow, um, evolve into something different or more. Um, those opportunities are always... You know, to me, that's that's what makes great performers, and it's it's where you find the best things. So, as they have those opportunities, like guys had, you know, uh, 30 years ago when there were territories in the U.S. and people could go to all these different places to go to, to have these opportunities, but not just have a place where you can go and do what you do, but to have a place where you can go and continue to grow, learn more, be taught more. Um, take things to another level, continue that level of professionalism, but yet also where your career is taken care of, uh, taken care of both, both, you know, financially, but also medically and everything else. You know you're in the best shape. Your quality rings, quality medical, quality training, quality everything. It's, it's there, professionalizing what we do across the board, around the globe. Great, thanks. And next, we will hear from Dave Meltzer with Wrestling Observer. Hey, Dave. Please go ahead. Hey, hey, Paul, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. It's a really interesting time. You know, it's a big transition for, for everybody in the business. Uh, Absolutely. Time and just... Yeah, yeah sorry. And, and winners of winners the fans, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. This is the best time for the fans and best time for the talent in 20 years. Maybe longer. Yep. Um, we've, we've talked about a lot.
lot of snow. Now, I guess on the on the draft, I mean, where is NXT, like, will there be NXT talent drafted to Raw or SmackDown, or perhaps is NXT going to have a rep? I mean, I don't know how the draft thing is going, but will there be a record representative from NXT involved on that draft, on those two draft specials? Or, or yeah, I, I, I think everybody's going to have to wait and see. I, I don't foresee that being something, but, like, right now I think the, the main focus of the, of the draft itself is Raw and SmackDown as as October 4 comes along and moves forward with with Fox and you know Fox broadcast taking SmackDown and us staying with our partners um, on USA and NBCU like that, those, those become two very competitive uh, landscapes. I, I'm I'm of the opinion that you know uh, the NXT brand um, will continue to grow and I think that down the line. You will see, as much as I, I will say right now, you know, NXT has grown to where it's, you know, it should have, shouldn't be referred to as a developmental brand, even though, you know, we tend to debut newer stars, um, especially over the years. You know, I think people lose perspective of the amount of stars that are absolutely homegrown, that had never stepped into the ring before, that walked into the performance center, made their, you know, mark in NXT and then moved up the line. Um, and are now on Raw and SmackDown and, and everything else, but um, I, I still think it needs more time to be considered in that in that same breath. Um, and I think that over the next few months, hopefully, we're going to get there very quickly as this show uh, does well. But I, I think the draft is much more about creating the brand split um, that that uh, that having two distinct rosters between Raw and SmackDown. Um, you, you're going to see that happening, and I, and I think that's what this draft is about. Now, um, you know, you mentioned when you're talking about the pay-per-views or the, or I should say, the takeovers, the big shows. That and and I got the impression from one of your comments a couple, maybe a week or two ago, that you're looking at maybe six this year instead of five. Is, is that correct? And also in in that realm, you're now going to have two hours of television instead of one. So inherently, you're going to have hopefully twice as many good programs. Although you know, I I, I know I realize with the old thing, not every single program was hit on every single one-hour show. But generally, you know, your one-hour show was focusing to build that that thing, and now with two hours, you certainly have time for you know instead of five matches, maybe seven or something like that. Or and I know you kind of addressed that earlier, but I mean in, inherent, inherently, you're going to with 